good to see you. Now, it's all right. Go ahead and stand. Let's go ahead and stand in the presence of the Lord. Y'all must be ready to worship. Y'all must have got up this morning and realized how good God really was. So you just got up and said, you know what? I come to bless his name. I don't know what you came to do, but I come to bless the name of the Lord. I didn't plan on saying it, but it just felt right. Amen. Did everybody have a good Christmas? And get ready. That's all right. Well, I'm glad to see you in the house of uh, God this morning. You know, as I was praying, the Lord impressed upon me something about worship. Because sometimes you might not feel God sometimes. Can I get a witness in the house? Sometimes you may not feel the presence of the Lord. But as I was praying and I was spending time with him, sometimes I might not feel the presence of the Lord. But it's not about what you feel, it's about who you know. Maybe, I, maybe that didn't really get you. It's not about what you feel, it's about who you know. Because when you don't feel God, you got to know who he is. I'm going to give you some names. He's called Jehovah Sinecu. He's our righteousness. When our righteousness was as filthy rags, he come down and he says, I'll be your righteousness. He's Jehovah Makedesh. He's the one who sanctifies. He's the one who purifies us. When we can't do it by ourselves, he's there to do it for us. He is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. When all hell is breaking loose in your life, there's a God of peace that will step down in the middle of your situation. He's Jehovah Rophe. He is the Lord God who heals. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is your provider. He is the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He is Jehovah Rophi. He is your shepherd. He is leading you in a triumphant procession. He doesn't leave you stranded. He's your shepherd. He is the great I am. He is the king of all kings. He's the Messiah. He's the Lord of all lords. He is our soon coming king. He is the son of the living God. His name is Jesus. So when you cannot feel God, if you just know who he is, then a reality check, you'll start to realize who you are. I don't know what you came to do this morning. This is the last Sunday of 2019. Can we just go out with a bang and just invite the presence of the Lord into the house? All over the house with your hands lifted up. Let's welcome God's presence. Heavenly Father, you are the great I am. You are the healer, redeemer, deliverer. You are everything that we need. And God, we come with an expectation that as we open up to you, God, you're going to pour down up in this house, God. So, Father, I just ask God that you have complete liberty in this house, that we would worship you in spirit and truth. In the mighty name of Jesus.
your hands today. Come on, surrender to him in this moment. God, we surrender to you, Jesus. singing this song the week after Christmas because we know that it didn't end with a baby in a manger but that baby grew up to be the savior of the world and his name was Jesus he was wonderful counselor almighty God everlasting father prince of peace why because a day would come 33 years later when that little baby would grow up and he would die on a cross on a hill called Calvary for you and me so that we can sing this song this morning and understand and know that whatever I've walked through, this is the last Sunday in this year, 2019. Whatever I've walked through in 2019, I know that God still brought the victory when he died for me. So whatever I'm facing today, I can have hope. Whatever I'm facing today, I have a future and I know God is on my side. I wish you would throw your hands up all across this building and just begin to praise God for what he has done to this point, to this moment that you can say, God, I worship you. Nobody else, nobody else could have done it. Come on out of your own mouth this morning. Come on, give him a praise that's worthy of what he's done in your life. Come on, we get comfortable because we come to church every Sunday and it becomes a ritualistic thing. But God is wanting to do a new thing. He's wanting to do a fresh thing. He's wanting to do a powerful thing in your life. And the only thing holding that back is you this morning. Come on, so out of your own mouth this morning, I pray that you would just lift up your hands and you just begin to worship the God that saved you. Begin to worship the God that filled you with the Holy Spirit. Begin to worship you, the God that delivered you from your addiction, your disease, your struggle, your circumstance, whatever it is this morning. Lift up your voices, oh you people, and praise God. Hallelujah, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. Come on, can you just say that to him? There's no one like you, Jesus. Come on, just say it to him. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. Come on, can you say that to him? There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. One more time, everybody say. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. No one can do what you do. There's no one like you, Jesus. Our hearts cry out today. There's no one like you, Jesus. Good night. 
worship you today and we give you glory. God, this is your house. And whatever tried to follow us in here today, God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. God, this is holy ground. And Father, I speak to every spirit that would hinder or distract this morning. And I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. Father, I stand in intercession this morning for people who have walked through the mud and the junk to get here all of 2019. And God, on this last Sunday of this year, Lord, I'm believing and I'm asking God that those who have walked through a tough season and come to the end of the year, God, they would also come to the end of a tough season and that they would step into fresh seasons and fresh anointing right now, Father. Do it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we vanquish every enemy of our spirit. Lord, we bind up everything that would distract or hinder what you're wanting to do in this house today. Lord, and we loose your spirit in this house. God, we loose your miracle signs and wonders so that others might believe. God, we loose the miracles of heaven. Lord, we ask you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we can't contain today in the holy, mighty name of Jesus. There's no other name like that name. There's no one who can do what you do. There's no one who stood where you stood. God, there's nobody who can do what you have done for us. And today, God, we declare victory and freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Victory and freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, I want you to take your hand and I just want you to raise it up like this. I just want you to go. You're time stamping the day that you walked into a new season right there. That's it. You're putting, come on, do it one more time. I'm putting a stamp on my new season. Right now is the time that I'm going to hand it over to God and I'm going to walk forward. I'm walking out of where I've been and I'm coming into a new place in God. I'm stamping it today, God, that I'm going to decide that I'll take everything that you bought for me on the cross. Today's the day. Come on, one more time with every hand lifted, every heart raised unto Jesus. God, we give you glory. We surrender to you today. We open ourselves up to you. Whatever you have for us this morning, we give you glory, Jesus. Come on, everybody, give God one big hand clap of praise this morning. And before you're seated, would you find five people and just welcome them into the house of God. Tell them you're glad to see them at Remedy Church this morning. God, we're so glad that you're here this morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on, let me ask that a different way. Are you glad to be at Remedy Church this morning? There are a thousand other places you could have been, a thousand other things you could have been doing. And, uh, if you're an Ohio State fan this morning, you're crying. I know you need a touch from the Lord. If you're a Clemson fan, you're praising Him extra hard today. Man, what a game last night. Wasn't that great? But we're not here to talk about football. I just had to throw that out there. Uh, we're so glad that you're here this morning, and we're going to do things a little bit different. I just want to go over a few things with you. Make sure that you're um, up to date on all that we've got going on at Remedy Church. Um, and we're going to have some slides on the, the screen for you to, to kind of pay attention to as I start through this. I want to let you know about a couple of things that are coming up. Number one, we've got a new message series that's starting in January. How many of you knew, know that uh, people fail New Year's resolutions every year? <laughs> the, the statistic is somewhat 80%, and most people quit by February. How terrible is that, right? But I'm telling you that we have a secret that we need to let out. His name is Jesus, and we need to allow people the opportunity to know who He is and that they can have a fresh start. So the last couple of uh, weeks, 
I've been preparing for uh, this message series in January because I, I just believe that with a new year, a lot of us are gearing up toward having a new me, right? And, and in, in, spite, in light of that, not in spite of it, in light of it, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the fact that God came to give us a fresh start and we can begin again and have a, a new life or a new creation through Jesus Christ. So uh, as you leave today, there are invite. You might, you might have got these invite cards um, at the Christmas services that we have, but we still have invite cards left. And what we want you to do on your way out this morning, there's a table just to the right in the lobby. Those cards are laying on the table. If you grab one, look, you've got family and friends that need a fresh start. Anybody know somebody who needs a fresh start? All right, I, I see, I've seen every one of your hands, and if you don't do it, the Lord saw you, okay? So you need to take one of those cards and invite them to Remedy Church beginning January 5th is when that uh, message series is going to start. So make sure you invite people with you told you uh, on Vision Sunday that we're going to start something new on Wednesday nights. Every first Wednesday of the month, uh, minus this one, <laughs> uh, we're going to do what we call wildfire nights. Uh, as you know, Pastor Alex and Sister Brandy have been doing inferno services with our youth, and they have been amazing services. God's done some great things in those services. And uh, the Lord led me to preach a message uh, called How to Build a Fire. Uh, at one of the last ones we did and I just believe that it was a prophetic word that God had for us and for his people during this this time in this generation God wants us to build a wildfire that'll spread and start revival in this generation I just believe that and we're gonna come in here on Wednesdays and it's gonna kind of be a mini version I said I don't want to like de-emphasize it by saying this but it's gonna be a mini version of what you're seeing today we're gonna come in we're gonna have worship going on there's going to be a message that's preached. I'm going to preach this first one, but we're going to have different speakers coming through. But the first one's going to be on the 8th of January. So not this Wednesday, but the next. And I want you to take note that next Wednesday we will not have midweek service because it's New Year's Day. It's New Year's Day. And we just would rather uh, take that time and just kick the new year off, let you spend it with friends and family on New Year's Eve. And we know that uh, it gets busy around the first of the year, so we will not have midweek that Wednesday. But the next Wednesday, we're going to kick it off hot and heavy with Wildfire Night. Is that all right? January 8th, be there. Invite somebody with you. It's at 7 p.m., regular midweek time, 7 p.m. The next thing I want to let you know about is 21 days of prayer, beginning the first. So we won't have midweek this next Wednesday, but next Wednesday we'll begin 21 days of prayer. What is 21 days of prayer, Pastor? It's a time where we're going to come together and we're going to focus in on some things as a church in prayer. And what we're going to do is we've got, if you go out of the, out the lobby, just as you exit the building to your right, there's going to be a stand with some different things on it. If you look on the second rack, there's a prayer guide for 21 days of prayer. It'll help you understand what you need to be doing every time that you sit down to pray during these 21 days. And it's also going to give you a focus for every day, day 1 through 21, so that we can come together and pray. Now, some of those days we're going to be in church and we're going to pray together on those days, okay? But we want you to participate in 21 days of prayer. We're going to be praying for the vision. We're going to be praying that God will send lost people into this house. Amen, somebody. And so we're, we're going to be praying that God does some great things uh, this next year. This next year's theme is believe. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. So this next year, we're going to believe God for big things. I am. I'm going to stand in faith. Read my shirt. My shirt says, faith got me living risky. I'm going to, I'm going to live risky this next year in big faith with God, okay? So uh, we've got 21 days of prayer. The next thing I want you to know about is New Member Sunday. It's January 12th. If you are interested in becoming a member or a partner with Remedy Church, we want you to gear yourself up toward that. The way that you can do that, you can speak to me, let me know that you want to do that. But I've got a resource for you that's brand new. Okay, it's brand new. If you want to become a member, I want you to, on that same rack where you'll find the prayer guide, there's a packet called Step 1. Okay, I've tried to make it as simple as possible because we want you to know that's Step 1. Okay, so before you leave today, if you want to uh, become a member, a partner of Remedy Church, we want you to grab that packet of information. It's going to give you all the information that you need to become a member or partner with Remedy Church as we move forward into the new year. So make sure you grab that. That's on January 12th. And uh, on January 12th, we'll come up here and uh, we'll, we'll take new members in and we'll recognize those who are partnering with us. Okay. 
Uh, the next thing that I want you to know about is our midweek series for January um, in the adult class. Let me clarify that. We have children's classes that go on, and we have youth that goes on here in the sanctuary in the cafe. The adults are going to be going into a series called You Asked For It. And uh, if you want to have your questions answered biblically, um, me and Brother Eddie are going to do our best to do that. And so we want you to turn your questions in. And what you can do is you can text the word QUESTION to 704-706-2877. Um, I, I don't know if we can get that up there real quick. I'm, I'm kind of going on the fly. I thought that it was on the slide. It's, also, it's in the bulletin. Okay, so it is in the bulletin. But if you have a question that you'd like answered biblically, we ain't going to give you uh, Pastor Cody or Brother Eddie's opinion. We're going to do our best to give you scripture. We're going to have discussion. Midweek, our Wednesday nights in the adult class is very interactive. We want you to take part in that. We have Sunday morning, Wednesday night. And uh, if you have questions about God, about your faith, whatever you have questions of, you can text the word question to 704-706-2877. The next thing, I probably called him in the middle of it. The next thing that I want to let you know about is in January, we're going to ask you once again to sign up for your connect groups, okay? For the entire month of January, we're going to ask you to put your name down on a list because we are working diligently to try to establish a new process for our connect group leaders to help us in making sure that we know what goes on in your life. It's an arm of pastoral care. Uh, if you have a surgery coming up, how many of you know that you probably want prayer before you go in that surgery room? Those are one of the, that's some of the stuff that pastoral care is all about. And so our Connect Group leaders are partnering with us and we're working diligently to get that system in place so that they can follow up with you on a monthly basis. And these Connect Groups, they meet monthly. Okay, it's not a huge time commitment right now. It's a monthly commitment. There are a couple of them that are going to meet more than that. We've got a, a new convert class that I want to tell you directly about called Catalyst. It's going to meet a little bit more than monthly. It's for if you've just begun a relationship with Jesus or uh, rededicated your heart to Jesus, we want to make sure that you're being discipled. And so I want to make sure that you get signed up for that. So be aware of all those, all those things uh, that are coming up. If it's your first time with us, this morning, we just want to say welcome. Maybe it's not your first time, it's your second time, a couple of times. Can we just welcome those who are new to us at Remedy over the last couple of weeks or this morning and tell them thank you so much for being here. Listen, if you haven't done it yet, we want you to text the word welcome to that same number, 704-706-2877, or you can fill out the prayer card in your bulletin. And if you'll do that for us, we're going to connect with you and uh, tell you more about the church, follow up with what the Lord's doing in your life, okay? Amen, somebody. We, we good with all of that. Does that make sense? Okay. So be aware of all these things. Be, be involved in what's going on. And as with that being said, I want to invite our ushers to come up and be a part of our time of giving this morning. They're not just a part. They're how we do it. <laughs> I'm thankful for them. And as they're coming, I just want to encourage you today. Uh, I know that this time is a little bit different. But I want you to understand that it's an act of worship to God. That giving is more than just throwing cash in a bucket or a basket or a bag. Giving is not just obedience to Scripture, but you're partnering with a local church where God is pouring out His blessings and His grace for people to receive Jesus. So when God said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, then my house might be full. It doesn't just mean that because I throw a George Washington into the bag that people are just going to start showing up. Ministry has to be done. And so by you giving, you partner with this church to make sure that ministry goes forward, the gospel's being shared. There's something called uh, the giving ladder. I want to tell you a little bit about it this morning. And you're going to find yourself on, in one of these places. Uh, you might find yourself this morning uh, never having give, given this morning. I, I want you to take a chance today, if you can, and give something. Maybe you're a person who's there, and, and each week or each month you're giving something, but maybe you need to start giving proportionately, right? Maybe uh, proportionately to, to, to every increase that God gives you, we give a tithe. That's 10%, right? That's a portion of what we make. Maybe, maybe you need to be a person who starts uh, giving consistently. Maybe you give proportionately when you give, but it's not consistent, right? But I, I, I just want you to participate in a way that's going to open up the windows of heaven over your life. And when you begin to give consistently, that's taking the next step of faith in God. It takes faith to do that. Maybe you're not any of those people, and 
you give regularly, you give proportionately to what God has given you, you give something, maybe you need to start giving radically today. Maybe there's something that God can do in your life further. Maybe there's a, a door that's not been unlocked because you've not taken that next step. But I, I just believe that you can't stop a giver from giving. And if we're generous this morning, we're going to be okay with, with what I'm saying today. And we know that God gave it all to us and we want to be generous to Him. Amen. So I want us to bow our head and close our eyes for a prayer. We're going to pray over this offering that God would touch the hearts of those who are giving and that He would use this for His kingdom. Father, we thank You so much for who You are. God, we thank You for all that You have done for us and all that You continue to do, all that You will do. Lord, we trust You with this moment and this time. God, I pray that You touch the hands and the hearts of Your people, God, that, uh, that if, if their hearts are tied to their money, God, I pray that You'd cut the heartstrings this morning and that You'd retie them to Your heart today, God. And as they do that, Father, I pray that You'd help them to loosen the grip on the things that they want to control. And today, I pray that You'd help us to give. Out of every increase of our, our pocket, out of every increase of our effort, God, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to give unto you and unto your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to partner with heaven to see people one uh, to Jesus, to empty hell and fill heaven. God, we thank you for every partner, every giver, every donor, God, that gives toward this cause for all people to experience real love through new life. And God, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do with this specific offering today. Stretch it, increase it, grow it, Father, and guide our hands as we use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you as you give this morning. you to know that I love you, Remedy Church. I really do. Uh, I'm excited because <laughs> with this new year means that I get to mark another year of being your pastor. Uh, we came here on March 6th, and on March 6th, we will have been here four years. Can you believe it? We'll be going into four, year four, and uh, we're so excited about that. Some of you are like, man, year four. <laughs> are they still here? Just kidding. Just kidding. We're excited to be here. We're excited to be a part of what God's doing here in Concord. <laughs> And, and what he's doing through Remedy Church. We, we count it a privilege and a blessing to be a part of that. But I want to go in the Word this morning with you. Are you ready for the Word today? Turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 33. I was listening to a song a couple of weeks ago, and the Lord just started speaking to my spirit. And I, I just, I thought to myself, you know what? I think that's going to be my message for sun, that Sunday on the 29th. Lord, I want you to help me to do it rightly because I want to leave this year in a way that will bless going into the next one. Right? How many of you know that how you leave one season will determine how you enter the next season? Now that'll preach. I don't have time to do that this morning, but you need to know that how you leave the season that you're in, how you leave your circumstance, how you leave the tough times of your life, however you leave that, that relationship that's hard, however you leave whatever it is that you're walking through, that's the same way you're going to enter into the new thing. So don't spoil the goods this morning. Don't spoil it this morning. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. This is God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. It says, ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. One simple verse of Scripture. Ask me. Here, here's what the New King James Version says. It says, call to me and I will answer you. Hallelujah. I'm gonna, let, me, let me rewind and do that again. Call to me and I will answer you. Hallelujah. But it don't end there. 
I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for the word of the Lord this morning. Come on, pray for me this morning and I'm going to pray for you. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to be on this word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we ask that you just touch this word this morning. God, that it be about you and not be about anything else, but God, that your name be lifted high. God, your word says that when your name is lifted up, you'll draw all men unto yourself. And God, today I pray that you draw men to yourself. That you draw women to yourself. That you draw children to yourself today, God, through your word. Lord, let it not be the weak, feeble words of a man. But God, help them to be an anointed vessel. God, that's carried to the hearts of your people. And through that, Father, that people might be saved, healed, delivered, and set free today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Everybody said amen. And amen in the house. He said, call to me and I'll answer you. If you'll call to me, I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things of which you know not. In another year's past, we're at the end of 2019. Two days from now, we're going to be in a new year. On Wednesday, it'll be January 1 of 2020. And uh, I didn't come with the, you know, that do you have 2020 vision thing this morning. You know, this, I feel like that's going to be way overused. But I do think that we need to walk into 2020 seeing clearly about who God is and what he wants to do. And maybe you've been grinding in 2019. Anybody been there? You've been grinding in 2019. You've been working it out, right? You've been going through some stuff. You've been walking through some mess. You've been dealing with some mess. You've been dealing with some crazy people. Some of you are thinking, well, I deal with that all the time. I've got family that falls in that category. We've been dealing with some craziness and, and all of that. And 2019 might have been a, a tough year for you and your family. I'll be honest with you. 2019 is not the year that I'm going to look back and go, man, that was a year everything came together. I'm not going to look back at 2019 like that. But I am going to look back at 2019 and go, I learned some things in 2019. I saw some things happen in 2019 that I never thought I'd see happen, both good and bad. I, I walked out of 2019. I'm going to look back and say, you know, I walked out of 2019 a better man because I saw some things that I didn't expect to see and I learned some things that I didn't expect to know or understand, but because of God's grace and His goodness. That's right, you heard me say His grace and His goodness. Because of the things that I've walked through, God has used them and He's working all things according uh, to, to his, his will for me. He's working all things to the good in my life. Amen. Does somebody believe that this morning? That even though 2019 might not have been the year you want to remember, it might be the page that you want to tear out of your story so that nobody can look back at it and see what went on. Or maybe it's so that you don't have to look in the mirror every day and remember what 2019 brought you. But I'm here to tell you that God is working it to your good. He is not finished yet. If you're still here, God is still working. Anybody believe that this morning? Whatever you've dealt with in 2019, I'm coming in today uh, from the Lord to tell you to get ready. The best is yet to come. Don't lose faith and don't lose hope. Those are the things that God said. Don't lose faith, don't lose hope, because the best is yet to come. Somebody believe that this morning. Going into 2020, I hope it'll be a little bit different, Pastor. I hope this year will be a little bit different. It's different when you begin to express to God your thankfulness and gratefulness for the things that you have learned and the things that you now know so that you can walk more uprightly going into this next year. You're not going to get anywhere being ungrateful and complaining about what's already been. But God is leading you. You need to know that, that God is still leading you. You're, some of you are walking away from relationships. Some of you are walking away from jobs. Some of you are walking away from seasons of life. Somebody might be walking away from uh, the person that meant the most to them. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God doesn't waste anything. And because you're walking away from them, that means that you're walking to something else. He's not going to leave you hanging. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Jesus himself said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He said, I, lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the age, right? And I've just come to encourage somebody this morning and remind you that God knows what he's doing. If you've forgotten, he knows what he's doing. Uh, how do you know he knows what he's doing, Pastor? If you just look at John chapter 1, 1 through 13, I'm going to read it to you. Is it okay if we read scripture here this morning? It says in John 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. If you don't know who the Word is, that's Jesus. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. Thank you, Jesus. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Uh, but, but there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness, 
of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that life. It's talking about John the Baptist here. He was not the Messiah, but he had come to prepare the way of Jesus. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that was the true light, which, every, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, Jesus, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And I've come to tell somebody this morning, maybe I've come to remind you today, that you are not born of man, but you have been born of God. And because you have been reborn through new life in Jesus, because you've experienced the real love that Jesus has to offer you, you have become new in Him, and you don't have to put up with the mess of the devil anymore. You have authority and power when you speak. You have authority and power in your hands. You have authority and power when you walk. That everywhere your footsteps, God will give you that territory if you just ask. What did the Bible say in Jeremiah 33? He said, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things of which you know not. That's a promise from God. And I know it's buried in a prophetic book to a, to a prophet, to a, a people during that time. But there are things that we can extrapolate or, or exegete from the text, meaning that we pull out a principle from the text knowing that he didn't just mean it for Jeremiah. He didn't just mean it for the Jews in Israel, but he meant it for you and me and for every son and daughter of the living God that's on the face of this planet today. And I want to encourage you today that if you don't know him, you need to know him. Because when you call to him, he'll answer. Some of us have spent all our time calling on everybody else. We, we picked up the phone and we called that person that will get on the phone and make us feel better because we can gossip about the right things with the right people. Some of us pick up the phone and we call mama or daddy because it makes us feel better. But mama and daddy ain't got no answers, but they tell you they're going to pray for you and it makes you feel better. But I'm telling you, some of us need to stop picking up the phone and calling other people. Some of us need to stop getting on the internet and typing out messages and, and erasing them. How many of you do that this morning? Typing out things that you want to say, but you don't want to you know, ruin your witness or, or what, what have you. <laughs> Let's be careful this morning. But, but we, we need to start calling upon the name of the Lord. Because when we call upon the name of the Lord, He answers us. That doesn't mean that He just calls back, but He calls back with a solution to the problem that you have. God will show you the path that you need to walk if you call to Him. Proverbs says, Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge Me in all your ways and I'll make your path straight. But, you, but He can't make your path straight if you don't acknowledge Him. I come to remind you this morning that God knows what He's doing. And he don't need your help. He knows what he's doing. He don't need your help to try to dictate what's going on. But he does desire for you to partner with him in this thing that we call life. And submit to his will and say, God, whatever you'd have, I'll take it. Whatever your promise, I'll take it. Whatever your path, whatever your purpose for me, I'll take it. He was in the beginning. And he saw everything before it happened. John would write... The Apostle John would write later that from the foundation of the world, the Lamb was slain. That he saw it all from the beginning. Everything that you see here was the will of God. I want you to walk into 2020 with clear eyes and a full heart. And I want you to know that everything you see was the will of God. Everything that you see is working toward what He wants and desires for your life to be because He understands and knows that the perfect tool is refined by fire. It's got to be refined. You can't just pull material out, a raw material out, and it start doing what it's supposed to do. No, you've got to take it through fire and you've got to burn it and it's got to go through a process to be shaped and to be molded. And, and, and it doesn't look like very much in the process, but when you start to do it and with every step completed, it looks more and more like what it was meant to be in the hands of the blacksmith, in the hands of the person that's creating it, in the hands of the person that's molding it. And so when we place our lives into the hands of Jesus, you have to understand that there are parts that are not fun. 
There are parts that, that we'd like to tuck away. Maybe some of you are looking at 2019 and going, that's the part right there, Lord. That was painful. It hurt. It felt like I got hit too hard. I felt like it burned too bad. But I'm telling you, because you're still in the hands of God, He's still working with you. He's still molding you. He's still making you into what He wants you to be. Everything you see was the will of God. Everything we see, the, tra- the, the trees, the grass, the birds, but everything that you see in your mind's eye, in your heart, everything you see in your circumstance or situation, the will of God is to take you through that so that you will be refined and become everything that you're supposed to be. Everything you're going to hear today is about the fact that God saw it all before you were ever set into existence. Everything you're about to experience before the day is over is the will of God. Today on Sunday, I don't believe that you showed up here by circumstance or chance or some uh, willy-nilly sort of happening. I think that it was a divine appointment from the living God who saw you where you are and knew that you needed to be touched by Him in His divine will for Him to bring about something that you have not yet known. Amen, somebody. I believe it this morning. You might have thought God left you. But God knows exactly what He's doing. And many of us don't understand this, but sometimes silence is the key to revelation. Sometimes learning to be quiet. Some of you might remember several months back, shh, learning to be quiet before God. I had testimonies come out of that week Because some people hushed for the first time ever about their situation and God started to move. And sometimes silence is the element that will allow you to gain revelation of God. What what does that mean, Pastor? It means silence is the thing that will allow God to reveal Himself because sometimes we're so busy trying to do and trying to be that God can't get a word in edgewise. That's what they used to say back in the mountains. I don't know if y'all have ever heard that before. Couldn't get a word in edgewise. Couldn't say anything. Couldn't do anything because you're, too, you're such a busy bee and your hands are so busy working and you're so busy talking and you're so busy, let's clarify, complaining about your situation to God and you're thinking that your complaining is the one that's going to give you access to the answer to your prayer. But no, 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 no. Silence sometimes is the thing that does it. When I was studying in my undergraduate degree for my bachelor's, we learned about the power of silence. In counseling, most people can't sit in silence. Do you know that? They can't stand the sound of nothing. We've become so accustomed to noise and stimulation that we can't stand to sit in the silence. And and if you'll notice that as time has gone on, life has gotten busier. My wife and I were driving down the road the other day and she said, She said, you know, I think it's crazy how used to people had time to go and just sit with each other in their homes and talk and shoot the breeze and just spend time. And she said, it's like they didn't even schedule it. They just showed up on the doorstep and you just came in. Anybody remember days like that? They just come on in, right? Kick your shoes off, stay a while. And she said, you know, now it's like you have to schedule a Facebook event before you can get, get together with your friends. I ain't hating on Facebook events. I'm not hating on those of you that we've done it. But you've got to be intentional now more than ever, purposeful now more than ever, because life has become so busy. I said, I said honey, everything is so busy nowadays. And, As I thought about that the days after that conversation, I thought to myself, what a tool of the devil. What a tool of the enemy that he has has brought on the age of information where we are fully connected 24-7, 365. And if you're not at your computer, now you have a computer in your hand that you can be connected to the same things on your phone that you're connected to on the computer so that you don't miss one single thing. There are commercials that their slogan is don't miss a thing, right? Because we're so connected and we're so busy with everything that's going on and the devil has come in, Satan has come in, and he has tricked us into thinking that business Busyness equals productivity. And he has tricked us into thinking that the more noise we have, the more we have going on in our lives, and the more that's going on in our lives, the better that we are for God. And we have bought 
into a lie that tells us if, if you'll just get with it, if you'll just stay in the flow of traffic, if you'll just keep going, no matter what's going on in your life. And that's why some of you are coming out of 2019 so tired. It's because you bought into the lie that told you that if you just hop into the flow of traffic with your pain, if you just hop into the flow of life with your scars and with your hurt and with your bad relationships and with your bad habits and your bad patterns of living, that everything is going to be okay because you're doing something great with your life. And some of you are sitting here on, on, on December 29th, 2019, feeling empty, used, and burnt out. And you're like, man, everybody's excited for this new year, but I just, it just feels like another day to me. And it's because we have failed to see the key to the kingdom in the fact that sometimes silence is the revelation of God. We have not unplugged long enough. We have not given way to the way of the Lord long enough to hear Him. To step away from the noise and the mess. To step away from everything that we've got going on in our lives long enough to actually hear from the Lord. And we're tired and we're hurting and we're sick. And we're without and we're addicted and we've got all kinds of junk and 2019 has left us dry. But God wants you to pull away. Silence can be the key sometimes. Most people can't sit in silence. So they interrupt it. They interrupt the silence with their problems. They interrupt the silence with their obstacles. Here's what I learned in my undergraduate degree is, as a counselor is that the idea is that if you sit in the silence long enough, the person will start talking. Because they can't stand the awkwardness. They'd rather tell you what is truly going on on the inside than to have to sit there and stare at you in the silence. And so the key in that lesson was, if we could just stop talking for a minute, the key to figuring out what I need to figure out is in the silence. The key, and I, I just, I, I want to reiterate this to, to you this morning. I'm not in front of a classroom full of people seeking a degree this morning. But I am in front of people who I believe are seeking the Lord for some things this morning. Is anybody seeking God for some things this morning? You say, I need God to move and I, I want to hear what He has to say. And I want to encourage you this morning to un unplug for a minute and to be in the silence for a moment with Jesus. To, to sit back and stop trying to come up with your own answer. Stop trying to find that next place that you need to be. Stop trying to find that next gimmick or answer that's going to bring you some sort of fulfillment or satisfaction in your life. But some of us need to sit in the silence. Because a lot of us are like those people that we have to be silent with in the counseling room. We come to God unwilling to move, closed off, and, and with an unmoving spirit. And some of us find ourselves in a predicament this morning where we need help. And maybe we haven't wanted to admit it. Maybe you've been denying what's going on in your life. Maybe you thought other people, relationships, resources, and your own ability all mixed together could come up with the answer that you thought that you needed. The success that you thought you wanted. The breakthrough that you've been looking for but today you need the counsel of the living God to step into your life and begin to speak to you the things of which you do not know some of you are looking for answers in situations that have no human answers that have no human capacity to be answered and it can only be answered by the living God who performs miracle signs and wonders God knows what he's doing the second thing today, I want you to know that God sees what you're going through. He's not unaware of your situation. God may not have caused the situation, but He sure can use it in your life. I want you to know that. You don't know it yet, but the glory of God is what you're seeking. How do you know that, Pastor? You thought it was money. You thought it was a spouse. You thought it was a relationship. You thought it was being accepted. You thought it was fame. Maybe you didn't think that it was any of those things, but maybe it was something that I didn't list. And today, I want you to understand that what you're truly seeking is the glory of God. 
Because there's a hole on the inside of you that can only be filled by Him. There is a void spiritually there that you're trying to fill with physical things. It's the same reason that the the Jews that Jesus came to speak to could never understand what He was saying was because they were trying to apply physically what He was saying spiritually. And we are caught in the same trap continually over and over and over trying to fit something physical into the the essence of our lives where God belongs. We are caught up in a trap thinking that our life will somehow turn around and that when I get right, then I'll go serve God. When I get everything together, then I'll go to church. When the timing is right, then I'll live for Him. Whenever everything is going good, then I'll praise God. Some of you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're thinking, you know what? I just don't know if that that is what I need because I can't touch it. I can't feel it. It's not in front of me. But I'm telling you, the most real thing that you'll ever do is give your heart to Jesus. He can change your life. He'll make you new. Newer than you ever thought you could be. He didn't come to make you better. He came to make you new. And some of us are, have bought into the, the idea that better is what God meant for us. Better is what this life has for us. But Jesus came so that you could have life and life more abundantly. He didn't come so that you could be better. He came to transform you into a new creation. Old things will pass away and behold, all things will become new when you give your life to Jesus. That's what He came for. You're seeking the glory of God and you don't know it. You're seeking Him in your life. You don't want something to just get through another day if you're honest with yourself. You don't want to just survive another day. You're not looking for for just something else. You, You might think that you're just looking for another pill. You might think you're just looking for another hit. You might just think that you're looking for another cigarette. You might think you're looking for another drink. You might think that you're looking for another spouse. You might think that you're looking for another relationship. But what you're really looking for is the glory of God to come down in your life. And I've come to let somebody's spirit know that you have found Him in this house today. Today is a day that you can mark your life and say, you know what? I was seeking all of these other things. And every time I found them, they let me want. But there was a man named Jesus that was preached on a Sunday morning in Concord. And when I found him, everything in my life began to change. You're looking for the glory of God and you don't know it. You don't realize. I I think think that you don't know that you're looking for the glory because you don't think that the glory can come to you. That everybody else can get their miracle, but it's not. You. That everybody else can get healed, but it won't happen for me. That everybody else can put the stuff down and can walk away from those relationships and God will work it out, but not for me. I'm trapped. You bought into a lie this morning. You need the glory of God. You need to understand who you really are. The Bible said in Psalm 45, 11, the king is enthralled by your beauty. John chapter 1 verse 12, it said, you have been given the right to become a child of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 said, you're a son, you are a daughter of the Most High God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, it says that you are the image of God. In 1 Peter 2 and 9, he writes and says that you're a part of a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a part of a holy nation whose king is Jesus 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 tells us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 and 16 says that I am an heir of God. What does that mean? It means that His legacy is with me and I can inherit everything that He has possession of. Ephesians 1 and 4 tells me that I'm chosen. Ephesians 1 and 6 tells me that I'm accepted. Ephesians 2 and 10 says that I am God's handiwork and I'm telling you that God, whatever He has made, whatever He's put purpose in, does not throw away and cause it junk but he reworks it and remakes it and reuses it and tells you that you have purpose no matter what has gone on in your life come on somebody I'm thankful this morning for who God has made me to be God knows what he's doing God sees what you've been going through 
Lastly, I want to encourage you that the best is yet to come. Amen. 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 The best is yet to come. Whatever part of the plan that you've been walking out, I need you to know that the best is yet to come. Here's how I can be confident that you've not seen the best parts of your life yet. We looked at Jeremiah 20, or 33 and 3. It said, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things of which you do not know. But if you rewind a couple of chapters to Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13, it's one we know well. But we've quoted it until its meaning has been lost. We've said it and we've put it on canvas prints and on our pictures at home and on our, our wood, wooden decorations that we set on the tabletop. And we've hung it on our walls at home so much that it's lost its true meaning to us. But I want to remind you of what it actually says this morning. In Jeremiah 29, 11, verses, th verses 11 through 13, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. God knows what He's doing. He said there are plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. They're good, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Can you go on to the next verse for me? In verse 12. Then you'll call on me. And go and pray to me. Now listen. Call to me and I'll answer you. Show you great and mighty things of which you don't know. Then you'll call upon me and go and pray to me and I'll listen to you. Verse 13. And you will seek me and find me. When? When will you find Him? When you search for me with all of your heart. That's the prerequisite of seeing the glory of God come into your life. The prerequisite of an answer from God is for you to hand over everything and say, God, I've tried everything else. I've been everywhere else. I've talked to everybody else. I've called on everybody else. But this one thing that I haven't done is to call on you. And today is the day, today is the day that I will search you with all of my heart and I will find you. I'm calling to you. There's one thing I have not done. And some of your spirits are saying that this morning. I've done all this other stuff, but this one thing I've not done. Put a Facebook status out a couple of weeks ago asking for anybody at Remedy who had a miracle in their life happen. Didn't have much traction, but I'm just old school enough to do this this morning. If God has ever done anything in your life, she classifies a miracle. I don't get to determine what a miracle is. I want you to know that up front. But if God's done something in your life that you classify as a miracle, I want you to stand up real quick. Just stand up real quick. My God. <laughs> now come on, I want you to line up right here. If, if you're a person who's standing, I want you to line up right here. And form that line around the side of the sanctuary right there. Just all the way back. Just get in line and form that line all the way back. No, no, everybody this way. We're going to come this way. We're going to form a line and we're going to walk through. That's not going to leave many in the seats, but that, that's okay because I've got a feeling that somebody, even though God's done a miracle for you before, you're looking for a miracle again. Anybody there this morning? Anybody ever been a, a part of an old-timey testimony service? That's what we're about to have right here. God save from killing Thoughts 
of suicide can't stand at the name of Jesus. He's still moving. He's still proving just how great He is. How great He is. He's still moving. He's still proving just how great He is. How great me from crack cocaine, delivered me from every bondage that the enemy grabbed me, literally saved my life, and turned me into the man of God that I am today. I wish somebody throw their hands up and praise the Lord for what he's done in somebody's life. You don't have to stand in line and just wait for your turn. We can praise the Lord where we are. Praise the Lord. He found you. Can we give God praise that he finds us when we don't think anybody can? He's delivered me from depression and suicide. Praise God. Depression can't stand at the name of Jesus. Delivered me from drugs and alcohol. I flatlined twice and they broke me back. So I'm here. Praise God. He's the resurrecting king. Amen. He's brought me from depression and even alcohol. Praise God. Depression, alcohol, drugs. He's delivered me from all those. Praise God. He's, del he's a deliverer. Amen. Praise God. That's awesome. Salvation is found in Jesus. Come on and give God praise for salvation this morning. This coming January 5th, I was born again 34 years ago, delivered from alcohol, marijuana, and perverted sex. Praise God. Satan delivered me from depression. Praise God. Hallelujah. You were saved. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Amen. Not only did he pull me out of depression and suicide, he pulled my son out of depression and suicide, and he brought my baby home. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just thankful that he is a healer, because I was not supposed to be here today, but my God saved me in more ways than one. Just worship him for that. Praise the Lord. He's a healer. Almost got hit by a car twice. Almost got hit by a car twice. Thank God he's a deliverer. He turned me away from my old lifestyle and my bad habits that I used to. Praise God for deliverance. Amen. And freedom. Uh, God helped me from uh, depression and anxiety and feeling of wanting to kill myself. Praise the Lord. Amen. I had a, an angel to come down when I was uh, six years old and he took care of me ever since then. Praise God for the ministry of angels. Amen. They're with us. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He saved me and sanctified me 46 years ago. He's rescued me twice from tractor trailer wrecks where I've been killed. Praise God. Let's give God praise. He dissolved the blood clot that the doctors couldn't get dissolved, but he dissolved it. He's a healer, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. He's a healing God. Absolutely. Amen. God saved me from depression in this past year. He's completely turned my life around. Praise the Lord. Come on and give God praise, somebody. He healed my grandma from having a massive 
heart attack and food line, and she wasn't expecting to make it, much less walk, and she's walking and working again. Praise the God. He's a restorer. He delivered me from all my troubles and worries. Amen. We can have peace in him. God delivered me from the addiction of cigarettes, and he saved my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. God saved me from being a heroin addict, and I have eight years clean, and I give all the glory to God. He's a deliverer! I had depression, and I smoked marijuana, and stopped all that. And my brother had two major head injuries, and he got through both of them. Praise the Lord! God gave me a spirit of peace and comfort when I lost my mother and my grandparents. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, more than 20 years ago, he saved me from a very wild life that I was living and brought me out of that. And I've been saved ever since and he's healed me many times. Praise the Lord. He's got it. My footsteps my entire life, even down to changing world events, just to answer prayer. Praise God. He's healed me many, many times. Different things. I'm thankful for that. Praise God, he's a healer. He delivered me from cigarettes, and just last year I had four blockages. I'm here this year. <laughs> life and life more abundant. Among all the things God has done for me and saved my soul, set me free from a lot of things, the bank was going to take our house because it was a clause in the contract we didn't know anything about being first time buyers. And God paid off my house. Praise God. He's got the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm telling you, he's good. Yeah, I used to be addicted to Percocets. I don't even know what that is. And also, I took 32 pills, like blood thinners. And they said I shouldn't even be here, but so, uh, You're still here. He's got purpose for your life. I have been saved for over 49 years. And um, you've made a statement about 2019 being a year. 2019 was the year I was cured of prostate cancer. Praise God. Cancer can't stand at the name of Jesus. Uh, I was healed from cancer 41 years ago, standing right there. And the doctor told my husband to get housed in order because I had about six months to live. But you're still standing. Amen. Come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, I want you to spread out. If you're a part of this group, I want you to spread out across this altar. Here's what we're going to do. If you're in your seats, maybe you're a part of this. Maybe I want you to stand where you are. Spread out across this altar. Spread out, spread out, spread out. God told me to tell you to get ready. He said, get ready because the best is yet to come and how you leave one season will be how you enter the next season and on this last Sunday of 2019 I want to leave this season I want to leave this year giving praise to God for everything that I just heard and I pray that you'll turn around and that you will just praise him with me can we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords every hand lifted every voice lifted Praising unto God. Hallelujah. He's still moving. He's still proving. But just how great he is. He's still moving. He's still
great He is how great He is Father we love you some of us are only standing here because of you God we've given testimony unto you and we've lifted up your name And God, your word says that you'll draw all people into yourself when your name's lifted up. And I know you're still drawing somebody. God, we've given you praise. We've given you honor. We've given you glory. But God, I pray that you'd move one more time in 2019. With every head bowed and every eye closed in this house today, you might have given testimony of what God has done in your life to this point. But some of you might be standing here today in need of a miracle and in need of a touch from the living God this morning. And if that's you, I'm not going to say anything else. I just want you to slip your hand up. I need God to touch me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone? Hands going up everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. If you're not in the altar and your hand is lifted because you need God to touch you, I want you to come to this altar. I want you to make your way down here. Come on. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. If that's you and you can make your way to this altar, I want to pray with you. Before this year ends and we walk out of this season, we're going to get the victory before we walk into the next. Amen. Several are already here. Come on, if you're a prayer intercessor or you're a pastor or an elder and you're free, and you can come pray. Keep those hands lifted. And if you need God to touch your life, I want you to raise your hand. If you don't need him to touch you, if you're not praying for anything, then I want you to lift your hand because I need to see. If you're a prayer intercessor, Brother Wesley, can you help me pray? Pastor Alex, help me pray. Brother Jeff, can you come help me pray? Sister Jessica, come help me pray. Brother Dale, can you come help me pray? Still proving, still proving, just.
just by reading it in scripture but by seeing it with your own eyes that he is great and greatly to be praised come on i wish i had two or three witnesses in the house today that you say i know that i've seen it i know it i've felt it i've experienced that he's great and greatly to be praised come on and give god one more big hand clap of praise lift his name up yesterday, today, and forever. Some of you in here is about to walk through the best season of your life. Like what the pastor said, the way you exit this year into another season is the way it's going to come about. Somebody is about to walk in the best season of their life. Unanswered prayers that you've been praying and seeking God it's going to be heard and delivered and set free. The battle of cancer is over. I don't know. Brother Ron, stand up real quick. I just want to tell you. I don't know if they're ready for the God that we serve. I don't know if you understand the God that can open up every single door. There's not a man. There's not a devil in hell away from God's promise and his blessing. If you believe that, I want you to throw both hands up. Both hands up. And I'm going to count to three. And you're going to give God the best kind of shout of praise that you got. I need you to lower your microphones because I don't want the VA to blow up. I'm going to count to three. And if you believe that you're getting ready to step into the best season, I'm going to count to three and you're going to shout, one, two, three. Father God, all over this house there's been proclamations and shouts of glory and shouts of praise. As we exit this place, we go out shouting, we go out victorious, and it's to your name we give glory. God, we give you glory, we give you praise until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Woo.